hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video as you can tell i am going to be talking about interview questions for farm b you guys ask me what i'm in school for um in my q a get ready with me video so today here's your answer you know honestly it was placed on my heart this morning i was led by god to do this video I'm such a private person. Only my family knows what's going on, the process. Um, I've had a lot of people praying for me, a lot of prayer warriors. And when I just woke up today, God placed it on my heart to use my YouTube channel for his good. And, you know, I kind of, it's hard, it's hard for me to do this because I am such a manifestation person. I don't like to talk about things until they have come to pass or like until I'm living in it, but I am living in it right now. And my story, I have a lot of different stories that is included in one big one. Um, this story is tricky. It's a tricky one, especially during this pandemic and quarantine. And I feel like that is why he's led me to make this video to help so many people who are so nervous about this process right now no one helped me <laughs> no advisors no faculty no one helped me during my application process and as sad as that is you know i'm used to god being by my side and making things happen for me and when you are just being obedient like I am doing right now, because this is still not something that I really want to do. This is something I know I need to do. So I'm here to help you guys, which is why I am dressed like an interviewee. So I want to go ahead and talk about the process during this quarantine. It has been a very tricky one, but it has also been amazing. Like it has been such a beautiful experience and i am really grateful for it all god is always on time so if you really feel like this pandemic has set you back in a way you feel like um it's made it harder you gotta dig a little deeper you have to see the brighter side of it it's a reason for everything and honestly this pandemic is the perfect time to apply because a lot of things have been waived or extended so so for like um my regular youtubers won't know what this is about but you guys know about the pcat and you also know about the deadlines for each pharmacy school they range from maybe november 1st or december 1st to june 1st each college is different but recently the some of the colleges that have their deadlines May 1st or June 1st have now extended it to July 1st. Um, some of the, the colleges that require the PCAT, they've waived it or the ones that have required it, it's now optional. So you don't have to take it, but if you take it, it obviously will look better. And then for some of the schools that required it, they just say, we no longer consider it because it will be unfair due to the fact that the last PCAT test which was in April, had to be canceled due to the pandemic. So in order to keep things fair, they waived it. And so that's saving money. The PCAT test are about $250. That just saved you a chunk of money. And now you have more time. You have more time. Deadlines are until July 1st for probably, uh, I would say, 60 about 60% of the schools, 50 to 60% of the schools. So I'm here today to talk about interview questions and I am dressed like I was for my virtual interview. So I'm gonna go through questions that I was asked and just give you my answers and some tips on what to share, what to ask, and just to be nerve-free. Let's start off by, um, apparel so this is what i wore for my first interview which was a virtual one the second one was just a phone interview well first let me talk about the layout for the first one 
So as I said, it was a virtual interview, which was from nine to noon. It started off with the Office of Admissions, kind of just giving a background of the college, making introductions to faculty and dean and the dean. Um, some of the faculty talked about the requirements, um, the process, orientation, stuff like that. And then there was faculty ahead of student life to talk about the different pharmacy organizations and just different programs and groups that the college offers. And then the dean actually spoke to us, congratulated us and welcomed us. And then he gave us a background of the college when it was founded, um, his role as not only the dean, but a professor. So that was cool. And then around nine, no, between 10 and 11 a.m., we kind of broke out into sessions. So there were four of us, including me, all ladies, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and again, this is virtual. It was a Zoom meeting, so I'm able to see not only the other interviewees, but also the deans and the faculty. So it, it was more, although it's the pandemic and it's not a live interview, they made it as live as they possibly could. And it and because it was in the comfort of our homes, a lot of us at the end of the interview said we felt like very comfortable and not really nervous at all. So it was some benefits to that. And just like now, I had on <laughs> professional at the top, jammies at the bottom. So you really are <laughs> just comfortable. Three of them, the first half of the 30 minutes, they did their interviews. I was the only one doing my writing sample at that time. So because it was supposed to be from 10 to 11, that whole session didn't start until about 10, 10. So when they sent me the writing sample through my email, I was freaking out because I'm thinking, you know, they're going to have a full 30 minutes and I'm only going to have 20 minutes because we have to regroup at 1030. And because it's already 1010 when they're introducing that they're breaking us out into groups, I was literally freaking out. One, because I'm not that great at essays. Um, I'm okay. I won't say I'm not that great. It's just not my strongest area. Um, I felt more comfortable answering questions because I feel like I'm just a very honest, open, and understanding person. So I kind of just felt like I had that part in the bag. But the writing sample, woo! So I was hoping to do that last because as I'm writing, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I only have 20 minutes, which means I have to not only read each question, choose a question that I want to answer, give a full essay, so a full page, and check for grammatical errors and then send it in 20 minutes. But you know what? I was a magician because I pulled it off. After the writing sample, we then switched. So they did their writing sample and I had my interview with two faculty from the college. The first question that I was asked was, what risk have you had to take for pharmacy school and what was the end result? Another question was, have you had academic struggles in school? If so, how did you deal with them? What, what qualities do you have that will help you in the pharmacy field? When was a time you had to come together as a team to solve a problem and what did you do? When have you went above and beyond what was expected of you? Why or why not? And in my second interview, which was just a 30 minute phone interview, um, they weren't able to see my face. They couldn't, all they were able to go off of was the passion in my voice and the intellect and the knowledge that I knew. I felt like I was kind of so short with that one. So I really had to go above and beyond to kind of win them over. And the second one, I honestly still don't know my results because it was just a couple days ago. It was probably, yeah, two days ago. So in that interview, they asked me, why did I choose pharmacy? Well, first they asked me and introduced myself. They introduced themselves as faculty, um, 
and they asked me to introduce myself. So I gave them a little background of myself, but I also incorporated pharmacy in that background. And since I incorporated pharmacy, they just said, well, that kind of ties into our next question. Um, why did you choose pharmacy? The next one was, where do I work and what do I do? And then they asked this humanitarian question. I can't really remember what it was because I jotted down these questions right after I got off the phone. Um, let me think about, it was more so, how do you feel human beings, no, what service do you feel human beings um, should have as a healthcare, as a future healthcare provider? Something like that. And I'll answer this question just because I can't really remember the, the question. I remember more so my answer. And my answer was that I believe everyone should be treated how you should treat everyone how you want to be treated. And we should also treat everyone the way they deserve to be treated. Because a lot of times in the healthcare field, um, we have unethical situations happening with people in power. And unfortunately, there's a lot of families that cannot afford the proper health care. And so some patients and people are denied the care that they need and that they deserve because they, they don't have the money for it. And so I think it is very important to offer the care and to provide excellent service, no matter what the insurance is, no matter what their economic status is, everyone deserves to be treated the same. And unfortunately, it's not that way in healthcare. And that's kind of what, I, that's how I answered that question is as human beings, it's important to treat others the way we want to be treated, especially in the health field, because we have the power to do so. Um, another question was, do I follow the news, especially during this time? Um, why or why not? And I was honest with that question. I do not follow the news. And this was an opportunity to kind of make light of the situation and make them laugh. Um, I said, I do not follow the news. Although I have social media, I am very cautious of what I allow myself to watch and to believe because it's easy to um, be manipulated into something. I said during this time, you know, it's, we should definitely be cautious, but the media has used this pandemic to scare a lot of people into doing a lot of things. And I expressed that that is the reason why I do not look into to the news daily, um, how I actually look to my peers and mentors and medical professionals. I told them that I respect the information, but I believe that it should come from healthcare professionals, not the media who knows nearly nothing about it um, other than what they've been told. So I said I believe that the information should come from healthcare professionals. And I actually have a Chinese pharmacist at my job right now, and she told us about COVID back in October. So luckily, we knew about it. We were able to prepare our families. Um, and so I just talked to them about me using my resources, peers, and family to keep me updated, especially because I don't have a lot of time um, to do that every day. <laughs> but I did say the downfall is that during this pandemic, I was not aware that we could not take our kids to the park. <laughs> and one day, um, I was on the phone with my mom and she was like, what are you guys about to do? And I said, Hey, you know, I'm going to be taking King into the park. So we're going to ride bikes. And she said, you girl, you can't go to the park. <laughs> you know, like you cannot go to the park. You'll get a site. You'll get arrested. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, for real. And so that made a lot of sense, but because I haven't been keeping up on the news, I was kind of left in the dark about that. So 
I brought that up and just made light of the situation and they did laugh. So um, it kind of made things not so serious just for a moment. So I did appreciate that question, although it probably is bad that I don't watch the news. So I knew it was bad, but I couldn't lie about it. <laughs> um, how has COVID affect has COVID affected your work life? And they asked me if I had questions in the virtual interview and the phone interview. And you know, I honestly didn't have questions for the first um school because they did such a good job covering everything in our um in the welcome session that they covered all the questions that I had so I honestly didn't have any questions but I refused to leave my interview with no questions because I I did I felt like I did so well in the interview I finished 10 minutes before so they took the time to ask me a few extra and they also asked what questions I have for them. So I asked them, um, I can't remember the questions that I asked the first faculty. The first staff, I asked them about, they have a block curriculum. And so I asked them to kind of explain that a little more because a lot of colleges have traditional this program is a three-year accelerated program and they offer block curriculum and so it's a two-week block that you're focusing only on one subject at a time and then you're tested um, at the end of the two weeks and then two weeks follow they have um, another course or subject that you are being introduced to and they chose that field well that method to help the students retain information so i thought that was pretty cool and i just asked the professors to kind of just go more into detail of that curriculum and then for my phone interview i asked um the faculty to explain more of what they do and what part of what role they play in the college of pharmacy not only the college of pharmacy but in in the college in general. And um, they both said that they were professors. Then they told me what subjects they were professors of. And then they went into detail of how they also, um, one of the faculty is a researcher. So he talked about research and the other one um, said that he also teaches courses in PhD programs and master's programs. And the second question I asked was given my circumstances and after sharing my story, they know a little more about work, mom and school life and dance mom life. I mean, obviously I'm going to have to give some things up, but I just asked them what um, would they recommend study habits, would they recommend I do to be successful in the program and they gave me some really good tips so just be really engaged with the questions that you're asking um you know i've always been told to if you don't know what to say ask the person about themselves some people just love to talk about themselves and they take pride in the work that they do and in pharmacy they contribute so much to society that not only are they um, they're open and proud of what they do. It's actually knowledgeable to know and understand what they do because a lot of them are in the background. Like researchers, researchers are background efforts that help society in the long run. So, um, you know, just make sure your questions are genuine and that if you don't have one, you know, ask about rotations, ask about... Um, research just talk about different things after our breakout session um, with the interview questions and the writing sample we also did a group activity where we were lost at sea and they gave us about 14 to 15 items um, to rank individually and then rank as a group and then explain why we chose the importance of each item so that is how my interview went. I'll talk about the application process um, 
another time, but you know, I just had to share the interview experience now um, while I'm going through it to help those that are still working towards applying for this cycle. So if you guys have any questions, let me know and I will be glad to help. Thanks for watching.